Join us today as we uh, go through winter maintenance on Trident Maples. All right, Lindsay, so this is Jan, no, this is December, early December, and then leaves has fallen, yep. trees are asleep. And you can see how these uh, long internodes need to be kind of maintained a little to bring, make, keep the density. What did you do? So between fall, um, so last time we came was summertime, we did a secondary trimming. Um, and then of course, uh, fall came, leaves came, leaves dropped. Did you, and so right after leaves have dropped, did you do anything other than remove the leaves from your tree? No, brother? but during the summer, I did a little bit of bringing back a little. Yeah, okay. So that these, uh, they wouldn't create too big of whips and distort the branch, you know, you get these long whips and then it gets fatter in those areas. So uh, I, I did a little bit of refining pruning in the summertime so right now during winter time did you do anything special other than just remove the leaves no the the wind removed the leaves no <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't have to um, did you do any trimming at all because right now there's a lot of fine branching still on, on this tree mm -hmm. no, so i didn't do any pruning no oh, anyway, so because we did that during the summertime all, all, right. all of the coarse growth that we removed during the summertime right did you do you fertilize right now during the winter time at all no, so I'll wait till uh, the leaves start to bud uh, and swell, and then I'll start maybe feeding after they pop out. Kind okay. Watch that swelling. But uh, yeah, I mean, when they're older trees, you don't really need a lot of growth. Now, this tree would be nice if I had more density. So I've been overall feeding a little bit more to get a little more growth during the growing season. So uh, there'd be more definition on each branch. With that, uh, would repotting this into a grow pot just to reinvigorate the, the structure of the tree, would that help out in the long run? Versus growing slowly in a pot. I mean, there, I mean, there's there's pros and cons between growing in a pot versus growing in a grow pot. Yeah. Well, I think if you... W one thing I noticed uh, that helps invigorate the tree is to... Uh, if you can, you could even uh, raise the soil level up in the pot itself that, that it's in. You mean like put soil on top of it? Yeah, put like a, a like top a dressing. little dam. Oh. Like uh, with a plastic, a plastic pot, you could raise it up like about this big and tie it down and then add soil to the root area. Okay. And that really strengthens the tree. That's what I did with this one next door here, this- uh, The maple. Piohime. Yeah, the roots really develop stronger in the top seemed like it got stronger too so um, if you don't want to if it doesn't really need root pruning then you could just add soil uh, uh, maybe a couple inches above what it's used to and then that constant soil moisture will uh, strengthen the root system and it's because that gets stronger the top gets stronger also and this tree was repotted this year correct mm -hmm. So well, it doesn't need it for a while. Yeah. Alrighty. And then what's a little history on this tree? Uh, if you, if you remember. Well, uh, this one I got from, uh, uh, Vicky, uh, what was it? House uh, of Bonsai. Yeah. House how, of Bonsai. How we you? had a convention. There was a convention in Burbank many years ago. And I think it was a California bonsai convention. And, uh, so I bought this tree, uh, Got a pretty fairly good deal for. I mean, it was about this tall when I got it, and when I brought it home, it had no roots on it. I oh, see so you bought a, a cutting. Uh, yeah, uh, to my surprise and to my uh, irritation. <laughs> so, but luckily, fortunately, it rooted out, and uh, so anyway, yeah, it was it was just sort of cut flat, and there was some surface roots there and so in the pot that it was in it looked like it was rooted you know but I didn't know until I got home so just a suggestion just to make sure when you buy a big tree you know it was a big cutting oh this came from Korea by the way oh so it, import, it was an imported, imported tree yeah 
make sure that uh, there are some roots there because I, I mean I I paid like five hundred dollars. That was a lot of money back in the days. Yeah, and she wanted like eight hundred, and I got down to five hundred. Huh? And I thought that's a lot of money, and if this doesn't make it, I'm gonna complain. But <laughs> it worked out. So it worked out. Awesome. Um, so anyway, this is a uh, uh, import from Korea. And uh, let's see. Yeah, this one might have been field grown. I, you know, there's a couple other ones here that were uh, uh, Yamadori from Korea. Okay. But I believe this one was a field grown because there's all these cuts all over the place. <laughs> awesome. All righty. So we'll come back in springtime when you get when you do the when the first flush comes out, and then we'll follow up with, with this tree then. Okay. All right. But I could. Did you? Did we talk about cutting the back? No, we didn't cut it. So go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little cutting back uh, just to make sure that uh, when it sprouts out in the spring, it doesn't take off uh, all over the place. Is it okay to cut this in the winter time? Because doesn't some of those buds will die back? Are you worried about that at all? Yeah, we get snow here. So what I would do, uh, what I do is I, I leave about a quarter inch uh, a stub above the bud that I want to save. And if it dries back, it dries back a little bit. So you're not cutting flush to the bud you want? No, no. And there was this growth here uh, coming up. I, I don't know if you can see this, but there's this growth of training up like this, you know, a piece of wire and a zip tie. And I'm going to let this take off to make this branch stronger. Okay. So uh, it's a sacrificial terminal end and then I'll cut it back when it gets stronger but that's what this thing is here so, yeah it's uh if you don't do this uh and you kind of forget it's gonna uh take off too fast where the uh in the springtime in the springtime in those so the advantage of doing it now is you you'll you see, get to see the structure and you don't get to forget especially when you have more more than one tree to worry about yeah it's uh yeah well the citrus trees i always like to do some refining uh trimming right right after the leaves drop off and uh, we have a show winter so what show coming up in january so i want to not take too much because you always want to i'm not going to show this tree but you know if i was going to show a tree you don't want to take too much off you want it as dense as possible so you, you know the the lines show up better <clears throat> so anyway so if this was a if you if you're about to show this tree in a winter silhouette, you wouldn't be doing this at all, or would you? Oh, I'd do a little bit, yeah. Just to cut back to the silhouette, uh -huh. but not really shaping for 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 future. Until after the show, probably. Right. I mean, I wouldn't do. Yeah, I wouldn't do any heavy trimming. All righty. So thank you, Lindsay, for your time. Okay. Be good. We'll come back in spring and we'll look at this tree one more time. All right.